Welcome to the Reader Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm your host, Corey Graham. Join us here every Friday night at 8 p.m. or listen anytime via podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, to name just a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where the independent new authors come first. I'm really happy right now to be sitting down chatting with author D.L. Emmerich here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. D.L., thanks for joining me here on the show tonight. Thanks, Corey. Glad to be here. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm excited you have a new book out in stores right now. It's titled Mice World. Man in Christian Existence Working Obediently Regarding Lord's Direction, Tale One, Mice Driver. Can you tell me all about this book? Oh, yeah, it's an amazing work. I graduated school of ministry from my church in 2005, and now that was done. I was a minister, and I kept trying to accumulate the Lord's blessings and offer them back to him because that's where I found the most joy. And so I took my uh, years of driving. I'm a, I'm a tow truck driver on the freeway service patrol. I help people for free. Wow. And I've got a bunch of stories. And so I just started writing down in a notepad and recorder and stuff to uh, accumulate wisdom to pass on down to the next generation, even though I don't have any kids yet. But the thing took a life of its own. Characters were getting fun, the stories. The whole thing started out as a script for like a a live radio program or something because as a driver, I listened to a lot of audiobooks. Mm. So when I was done writing it, everybody was like, that's great. And they heard the audiobook and they said, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I guess I'll turn it into a book. And so I took it as a script and started adding the words of why and because and with great enthusiasm and The book itself is about the main character, Mice Driver. He prays in the morning and gets his direction from the Lord. And Lord tells him, and we find out later, to go around to his town folk, the Mausopotamians, and get their wisdom on driving because he's a driver's ed instructor at the high school. And the Lord wanted to tap the resources of stuff that may not be in the DMV handbook. I thought it was a great segue to dip into the wisdom of driving, have fun with the characters. There's over 30 characters involved, Mm. and the story just grew so fun. It's the most unique book I've ever read. (laughs) It's just entertaining, fresh, new, and one of many. Book two is already written, and I'm looking forward to that one coming out also. Fantastic. Is this a book you meant for younger readers then? It's meant for kids from 1 to 92. (laughs) <laughs> because if you can read, you can enjoy it. And if you can't read and someone read it to you, it would be just as fun. Mm. So there is no age limit on the book. How long of a process was this for you once you started actually writing the book out and then taking it through that publishing process? Oh, man. Oh, well, like I said, it was an audio script. So building the words and getting them to the point where they would come out with a flow that I enjoyed. Because, like I said, I, I made this for the Lord. Mm. And so <laughs> the key thing to do it was to have fun with it. And I'd never written a book before. So the whole process probably took three to five years working in between, you know, my 70 hours a week job. <laughs> Some days I would just show up and write, you know, this happened, you know, five words, and then I'd go to bed. <laughs> but I'd spend the days accumulating and writing out parts of it just so it would come together. And it's the most awesome thing I've ever read <laughs> next, to the, next to the Bible, which is <laughs> pretty much the source. After all that time and work, what was it like for you then whenever you got that first hard copy in, got to look at it and hold it in your hands? It's surreal. I think the people that love me are more excited than I am because with this sense of accomplishment, I use it as a platform as to what can I do with it? What comes next? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm very, very excited about the blessings that I've been given to this point. And we serve a mighty God. So I'm, I'm excited about the future. And for you now, what's the most rewarding thing about knowing that your work is out there for the world and people are reading this and benefiting from it? Hands down, it would be the confidence. I don't know about other people's upbringings and lives, but I always kind of felt less than and then I had to prove myself to God and the people around me, which, you know, makes me try harder. Mm. But it also comes from a place of less than. It's not very cool. So (laughs) Mm. putting out an accomplished work 
is an undeniable achievement. So I can't righteously get down on myself anymore. I can only move forward with the confidence that I've gotten this far and the Lord blesses me onward. Mm. I think this book is going to bless a lot of readers. It's titled Mice World, Man in Christian Existence, Working Obediently Regarding Lord's Direction, Tale One, Mice Driver. It's written by D.L. Emmerich and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this one everywhere, like at Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes and also traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Well, DL, thanks again for joining me here on the show tonight and telling me about your work. I hope we get to do this again sometime. Awesome. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. God bless you and yours. And everybody dive in. You won't regret it. God bless you. The Lunar Codex, book one of the Codex Chronicles. It's out in stores right now, and it's written by Annie O'Connell. I'm really happy to be talking all about it right now with Annie here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Annie, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Corey, for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Can you tell me all about the Lunar Codex? What can readers expect here? So the book, it's truly it's a coming-of-age fantasy, a coming-of-age story with a fantasy twist hmm. about a 14-year-old boy named Jace who was orphaned at three years old and was adopted by his aunt and uncle. Over the course of his life, he's required to move quite a bit because of his uncle's job. They're now in a new location, and he's really hopeful that this is going to be their permanent home. He quickly makes friends, and he seems to be getting everything that he's always wanted. When a supernatural turn of events completely flips his life upside down, then he's thrust down a new path of discovery where he needs to abandon everything that he's ever known while avoiding a danger that had been lurking in the shadows this whole time. Wow, this sounds like a great story. Annie, how did you get the idea for this? So I have four boys. And I'm actually, I'm a doctor in New York City. And during COVID, I was sitting on the back deck with my husband and my kids. And my two younger ones were out in the pool and they were playing and being boys, typical boys. And I tease with my husband that if it's a full moon, I swear one of them is going to turn. <laughs> and as I sat there, the thought just kept kind of mulling in my head and mulling in my head. And I said, give me a second. And I ran up and I grabbed my computer and I came back out and started plotting away a chunk of the outline at that point. And then through COVID, it kind of, it was my little cathartic break from reality. And they've become kind of like my go-to friends when I need a little bit of change in the uh, scenery. You mentioned outlining the book. Is that pretty much how the whole thing went? Did you outline it from beginning to end? Or did you just sort of outline to a point and then take it from there and explore and see how it ends? It was a very, very rough outline. Hmm. Like I say, it was more or less like a skeleton of what was happening with it. And then within the next couple of days, I actually, I just, I started writing. The prologue was the first thing that came out and it kind of took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting the twist that I was going to put in there. And I really liked the way that the twist happened. And it just started taking shape from there. So even with the next book, I start off with a, a rough draft of what I'm trying to accomplish, but I usually end up writing and changing everything that I was thinking of doing as I'm writing. Now, of course, fantasy readers are going to want to pick this up. Do you think this is good for teens and adults? Absolutely. Yes, it's it's very much geared towards, like I said, because I have four boys. My five-year-old, it's a little over his head, but I have a 16, a 20, and a 26-year-old. It was definitely geared where I would feel comfortable with them picking the book up and reading it. So yes, you definitely, even probably as young as 10 or 11 years old, could pick it up and it would be just as good for them. Fantastic. Have you ever done anything like this before? Writing a book and publishing a book is a huge, huge deal. Is this your first time doing it? Yes. <laughs> You know, when you start, you don't know if you're going to actually be able to get to that point. But I had a, a very strong support system with my husband, and we were able to accomplish it. Oh, Annie, now being your first book, I'm sure you learned an awful lot along the way. So what advice would you have for people out there who are just about to embark on that same journey? I mean, definitely don't give up on it. There is many times that I would sit there and I'd look and I'd go, oh, there's no way that this is going to do anything. Uh, this isn't good. And my husband would read it and he's like, no, it is good. It's, he's like, did you really think that any book that you see on the shelf started out as this great reader? He was like, You're, you have to go through the process. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's not going to come out great the first time. So definitely just keep going. And before you know it, you'll have it written. And I mean, it's, it's such an amazing feeling once you've actually completed something like that to then go through the process and be able to hold something that you put so much time and effort into. It's definitely the process is well worth it. It's not an easy process, but it's definitely worth it. Just keep going. 
I know a lot of readers are going to love this book and ought to check it out. The title is The Lunar Codex, Book One of the Codex Chronicles. This is written by Annie O'Connell and is published by Fulton Books. You can grab it up everywhere like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Google Play, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Well, Annie, it's been really nice talking with you here today. Thank you so much for telling me all about the Lunar Codex and the Codex Chronicles, where you're going next with it, and can't wait to talk with you again. Oh, I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you so much, Corey. Really happy right now to be sitting down with author Howard King here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Howard, thank you for joining me here tonight. Oh, man, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you here. You got a new book out in stores. It's really exciting. The title is The Principles, A Pathway to a Happier Life. Can you tell me all about this? Well, it's actually, the book is talking about uh, living through and by the spiritual principles. These are things that we have in us every day we wake up. As every day we wake up with life, but we are connected to these principles. It's impossible to disconnect from them because they're of God. Mm. So we have them with us. And we share them too, believe it or not. Because, you know, when you talk to your mom and you deal with your mom and your family, you love her, you love your dad, you love your sisters and your brothers. I'm just talking about sharing that same love with everybody. So, Howard, how did the idea for this come about? How did you decide to write this book? Actually, to me, it was through a conversation I had with God. Mm -hmm. I was at a was for years. I've been in the street. I ran the street for years doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I promised God that I was going to carry his message one day if he let me live long enough. <laughs> and I'm 62 years old. And I said, you know what? I'm out the street. It's time to do something. It's time to leave a message. Because they say that we have to leave this place better than it was when we got here. So this is my attempt to leave it better than it was when I got here. Hmm. And based off of what I see on the cover, Howard, you definitely are living a happier life now. You certainly look joyful there. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. And that was actually a picture I, I took. I was in a, a Florida visiting family a few years ago. And as we were strolling through the, looking for a picture to put up there, I looked at it, I was like, oh man, you can't get a better picture than that. And so that's what I used. Howard, what kinds of readers do you think would be really into the principles? Well, I'm, I tell you what, I believe for, for me, to me, I believe there's a message in there for adults and there's a message in there for youngsters. This is some easy, good reading. It's one of them books that you could take home and put it on the table. And if your 10-year-old niece pick it up or your 10-year-old daughter picked it up, you wouldn't mind her reading it. Mm -hmm. And if your 80-year-old grandpa picked it up, you wouldn't mind her reading it. So you could, it's readable from, from ages 7 to 70 and 8 to 80, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I believe that the youngsters can really get a message out of there because what I'm talking about, there's a portion in there, I'm talking about consequential thinking. And I did a little bit of reading on consequential thinking, man, and I'm understanding. I say, whoa, this is pretty good. And then I, I talk about our emotional garden. Our emotional garden is things that we pick up through our life course, what shapes and molds the way we think and the way we move, you know, our emotional garden. And if we, if we get our information from the street, then our emotional garden is going to be probably full of a lot of weeds, you know what I mean? So we got to keep the emotional garden groomed. I believe that a lot of youngsters will get something out of there. Or I think every student, every student ought to read this book between the ages of 13 and, and, and 18. Mm. And Howard, you certainly found a good publisher. Fulton Books published this one. What was it like then the moment you got that first hard copy and you got to hold it and look at it for the first time? Oh, man, it was, it was, you know, but believe it or not, man, for a fella that never finished school, it was kind of big for me, you know. Mm. I taught myself to read in the state penitentiary. Wow. When I was uh, 18 years old, I taught myself how to read. I started reading a lot of Donald Goins books. So I never, I don't have no schooling. Wow. My grammar was not good at all, so I definitely had to find somebody that could turn what I wrote into a good reading, so to speak. <laughs> That was huge for me, you know, and I, I just wish that my mom was still around so she could see the accomplishment. Wow, Howard, what an inspirational life story you have. What advice would you have for people who also have a story to tell? They might be listening right now. They want to write their first book. What advice would you have to get them started? Oh, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't stop. As long as you wake up in the morning and you have breath in your body, you have all the tools you need to get it done. So don't stop. I started right, believe it or not, that's not a big book. And I started that book somewhere around 2010. And now look, it's 2022 and it's just now coming out. <laughs> so don't stop whatever you do. 
So, you know, I had a couple of hiccups in there, but I got it done. So now I'm thinking about the next one I want to write, you know. People keep asking me, am I going to write my life story? Am I going to write my life story? But I think that the lessons that I learned through my life story is more important than my life story. And that's what you have with the principles. I know this book is certainly going to inspire a lot of readers out there. And I encourage everyone listening now to check this one out. The title is The Principles, A Pathway to a Happier Life. It's written by Howard King, and it's published by Fulton Books. You can find this one everywhere, like Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes, Google Play, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Well, Howard, it's certainly been wonderful talking with you today. Thank you so much for telling me about where you've come from and what you're doing now, and I hope we can talk soon. Thank you. I do as well. Regular listeners of the Reader House Author Roundtable will be excited to welcome back Patricia Edwards Burton. Patricia, it's great to be speaking with you again. Thank you for being here. No problem. What's exciting, you have another book out, and the subject covers something really important, and that's marriage and finding the right spouse. It's called A Husband Sent by God. Can you tell me what readers can expect here? Well, if you're looking for a husband, it's important to find somebody that you're compatible with. And no one knows all about us like God. Mm. So the best thing to do in, is to seek God for your husband so he can choose the right spouse for you and you for the right person. Mm. Patricia, how did the idea for this book come about? Well, my own story, because I waited for my husband for over 10 years. And even though it was a long wait, it was worth the wait because of who the Lord sent in my life. Mm. And how long of a writing and publishing process was this for you? Three days. Wow. Three days writing and six months, I believe, publishing. Mm. What was the most challenging thing for you this time around? There was no challenge this time because mm. it flowed. You know, from my experience, the content flowed. You mentioned, Patricia, that this will help women in seek of a husband. Would this also help us guys who are in search of a wife? Definitely. Guys can read it, too, because, you know, you guys, they're looking for the, I won't say the perfect wife, because I don't know if there's perfection in any of us, mm. but they're looking for a good spouse. In reading the book, you can see how I went about it, and my experience can help you. And Patricia, who inspired you this time around? I know your relationship with God is a big factor in your life. What people in your life inspired you and maybe motivated you this time? Well, my husband, the, the relationship that we have together is such a beautiful one. And because of that, I said, let me put it in words so that I can help someone to find, you know, the right spouse by looking to God because he knows all about us and knows who to put us with. Patricia, does that feeling ever get old, getting that first copy in after you've worked all that time? Does it ever lose that shimmer? No, <laughs> <laughs> because you see, the, the stories are different. So, you mm. know. You go with the story and, you know, it just flows out of you. So it's a great experience. Mm. Patricia, how do you go about starting one of your books? Do you start with a, just an idea, a spark, and kind of go with it from there? Or do you have a, an overall plan of what you want to write all together? No plan for me. I get an idea and I pick up the pen and I start writing. And when do you write, Patricia? Are you an early morning sort of writer, a late night sort of writer? Or do you just write whenever the ideas are coming? Afternoon. This particular book came in the afternoon, and I was working on it in the afternoon, and then I went through the evening, and after several days, we had a book. Wow. Well, with several books out there now, Patricia, the whole thing must be worth it to you, all the time and energy it takes. So why do you do it all? It's healing, you know, because one of my books, How I Overcame Abuse, My Struggle to Become Whole as the Station and Rape, was such a healing process for me. While I was writing it, I cried buckets, but at the end of it, I felt different. My husband looked at me and said, you're a different person. Mm. So, you know, the catharsis that I gained from writing that and letting it flow, and my other books too, the joy that I got from this one, a husband sent from God because of my experience, it was something that I felt was worthy to share so that I can help others with direction, you know, in order to get the correct style. Mm. Patricia, how did you come about the cover of this one? It's very important. It's the first thing people see. What kind of thought went into the cover of A Husband Sent by God? Well, sunshine speaks of joy. It speaks of light. It speaks of brightness, radiance, glow. You look up, you know, you're looking up to God for direction and for help. So, you know, I felt that that cover would be appropriate. As a matter of fact, 
It was the cover that I had in mind, but I did not tell Christian Faith Publishing that that was the cover I had in mind. So when I saw the cover, I was blown away because I was like, that was the idea I had, and I didn't share it. And they came up with the exact same thing that I had in my mind. Wow. Yes. Well, there are a lot of readers going to be helped out and encouraged by this book, and I encourage them to check it out. It's titled, A Husband Sent by God. It's written by Patricia Edwards Burton and is published by Christian Faith Publishing. Of course, you can buy this everywhere online at Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes and also down the street at your traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Well, Patricia, again, it's been wonderful speaking with you. I really enjoy our time whenever you come on the show and hope we can do it again soon. Thank you. I enjoy the interviews always. God bless. Spoken word poet Darren O. Salmon writes about his Christian walk in his new book, God Breathed, The Journey. Darren is right here with me now to tell me all about it. Darren, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Corey. Uh, It's really a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm excited. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here today, Darren. Can you tell me all about God Breathed, the journey? What can readers expect to find? Well, you know, God Breathed, the journey is a poetry book that is 10 years in the making. I first was inspired to put this book together all the way back in about 2012. And it is a conglomeration of work that I have been doing over the past 10 years. It gives the readers an idea of just my journey as a Christian poet, where, where it all began in terms of that prayer that I prayed at 2 o'clock in the morning, asking God for my purpose and asking God to give me direction. And all the way through to a poem alone, which is the last poem in the book, um, just speaking about this Christian journey and how it feels sometimes. And so the book is one that is very relatable. Any and everybody who picks it up will find a poem in there that they can relate to, that they can resonate with, because it goes through the highs and the lows of the Christian walk. Yeah, I love this unique idea, a poetry book about your Christian walk. Darren, what kinds of readers do you think would be really into this? Well, really, people who are deep thinkers, people who are reflective in their nature, and of course, people who are Christian and are maybe having a hard time understanding certain aspects of their faith and who are seeking to get more insight or seeking to get a fresh new perspective. The thing about poetry is that you have a thing called the poetic license Mm. that allows you to say and write things that you wouldn't normally hear on a pulpit or on a TV program. Mm. And so the poetry in this book will allow some people to really get a good understanding of what the Bible has to say about certain aspects of the Christian faith. Mm. Darren, is this your first time publishing, or have you done this kind of thing before? This is my very first publication. Congratulations. That's really exciting. What was it like for you whenever you got the first physical copy and you got to hold it and look at it for the first time? Yeah, it was very surreal, you know, especially since it's been a so long time. It's been such a long time, you know, just to get to this point. There are many times I was like, boy, I probably I shouldn't bother with it. And, but I was like, no, you know, this is the purpose that God has put me on the earth for. You know, I am his mouthpiece in the earth and I'm supposed to be his voice to the people of the earth. So I said, you know what, let me push my own inhibitions and fears aside and just do what the Lord has instructed me to do. Hmm. Darren, do you think we'll see more books from you in the future? Most definitely. Um, this is actually intended to be a poetry book series. Hmm. Even though right now I'm going through some stuff in life that has really caused the writing well to dry up somewhat, I don't think it's absolutely dead. And I will. I have other poems that I have not put into a book as yet that I intend to put out in the future. Actually, the second book is already like put together. I just need some finishing touches to start the whole publication process. But yes, there will be more books to follow on the God Breathe heading. Hmm. Darren, you touched on something that a lot of us authors go through a lot, and that's writer's block. You mentioned those tough times in writing, the dry spells that you go through. How do you get the words going again? Do you have a strategy for maybe getting those ideas and those words going again? Well, I guess for me, it would be just going back to the source, you know, just going back to how things were Hmm. before the writing dried up. What I tend to find with myself is writing is a very emotional experience. And so if there's emotional turmoil within me, that will definitely affect how fluently and how creatively I can write. 
However, if I can get back to where I was before the emotional turmoil began, then that could possibly turn things around. I know a lot of readers are going to find this book very inspirational. The title is God Breathed, The Journey. It's written by Darren O. Salmon, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can buy this everywhere, like at Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Darren, thank you again for coming on the show and telling me about your work. I had a really nice time chatting with you. Yeah, man, Corey, it was indeed a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. Author Ophelia A. Villanueva is sitting right here with me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Great to have you here, Ophelia. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Corey, for having me. It's an honor. It's an honor for me as well. You have a new book out in stores right now. It's part of the Return to the Earth series, and the title is in Spanish. And again, my Spanish isn't the greatest. So, Ophelia, could you tell us about your book, the title, and what readers can expect? Actually, the book is Volver a la Tierra. And it, it, you know, it's just a, a translation from Return to the Earth. And it's about a successful businessman from El Paso that has dedicated his entire adult life to his empire. But in the process, he has neglected his family shamefully. Mm. One day he decides to send them to a trip to Southern California. And right outside of Phoenix, Arizona, his plane crashes and he loses his entire family, including three small grandchildren. After that, of course, you know, it's understandable. He is completely devastated. He turns to liquor and he spirals basically out of control and he attempts to take his life and there's an intervention and he is unable to do it. And at that point, he decides to return to his native land, which is in the jungles of the Yucatan in Mexico, land of the Maya. There he discovers his true origin and his purpose, which is to save the world from an impending catastrophe. Can you imagine that? Sounds so exciting. Can you tell me how this book came about? Well, actually, it was my husband's script. His dream was to make it into a movie. Hmm. He handed it over to me and he said, why don't you just write the story? I'm not a writer. I do scripts. He said, scripts are so different. (laughs) So he said, just do your your thing with it. And I, I trust you completely. And I did. I just started, you know, writing and jotting down ideas from the script, of course. And before I knew it, I had it all ready. But unfortunately, my husband died uh, of COVID in November of 2020. I'm sorry. So he was never able to see his dream become a reality, unfortunately. I'm sure it was a challenge taking a script and writing a novel from it. Have you ever done anything like this before when it comes to novel writing? In a way, it was new because I had never really written anything from a script. Although my late husband was very much for all the changes that I made, because it's a completely different story from the script. The basic idea is there, but I changed it a lot. I made it more exciting. You know, I put the Mayans in there and aliens and all kinds of things. So it is different. But I had written a short story when I was going to a university in Silver City, New Mexico. I was taking a Spanish class there, and the professor encouraged all of us to write a story, a short story, and I decided to do a story on my life, and I called it El Destino, which is destiny. And that's how I got started, actually. And then my my late husband read it one day, and he saw the potential. He said, you have the biggest ability. Why haven't you pursued it? (laughs) I'm glad that you did. Now, this book is in Spanish. Can you tell me about the target readership that you were going for here? What I wanted to tell your audience, Corey, is that most books are usually translated in different languages. But this book, I wrote it. I actually wrote the English version first, and then I wrote the Spanish. Hmm. So you can't really say that it's translated because it's too, they're a little bit different in a way. You can't really follow it word by word or paragraph by paragraph. I think that's really important. It adds the human element to it. Yes. Also, I felt like the story took place in Mexico. Mm. I felt like it had to be in that language as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So like I said, I'm very proud to tell your audience that it is written in Spanish. It's not translated. So it makes a big difference. The flavor is there, you know? So you wrote the book twice. How long did this take you? Altogether, with with writing the English Return to the Earth, it took me approximately three years. 
but only because I didn't dedicate full time to it. Mm. It was only in my spare moments, you know, because my late husband and I, we had a real estate business. So that took up all our time. I know a lot of listeners are going to love this book and should check it out. It's titled Volver a la Tierra. It's part of the Return to the Earth series, and it's written by Ophelia A. Villanueva. You can find this everywhere, like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Google Play, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. And, of course, it's published by Fulton Books. Ophelia, thank you again for joining me and telling me all about your work. I had a really nice time chatting with you. Thank you so much, Corey, for having me, and it was an honor. You know, the importance of staying active and eating right really can't be stressed enough. The new book by Gerard Roberts, M.D., called The You of Chew, is right in that vein. The author, Gerard, is right here with me now to talk with me all about it. Gerard, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. Can you tell me all about The You of Chew? Well, The You of Chew is a magical world, if you will, that has fun characters that were created from scratch to help guide and teach children about healthier choices for a better life. It's really an offshoot of something that was already out there that we produced. It's a free app called U of Two on the iOS and Android platforms for children in a gamified way that's helping them with their health. So I thought, what better way than to try to do a corollary book in an old school fashion because it's an interactive, educational coloring book, Hmm. which the characters are leading them through these vignettes about things that they may be concerned about, especially going through and dealing with the pandemic that we're still in after two years. Being a board-certified pediatrician, I've seen how this has affected children. So I wanted to somehow try to come to their level with stories and vignettes that may be intriguing and engaging for them. And hopefully we've done this with the YouTube book now. Hmm. What ages of children do you think this is best suited for? Typically, we're going for 6 to 12, and there's a reason for that, because those are probably the most impressionable years. Mm. In addition to that, children of this age are so engaged now with social media and devices that they are really more in tune than we ever were growing up to things that are going on around them. So I figured this is the age group that you want to have the most bang for your buck with because then you can lead them to healthier choices for a better life for many years to come. Was the U of Two something that took a long time for you to write and then publish? Oh, absolutely. And I was surprised. Mm. It took about 10 months from start to finish being something that I was new at, a novice, going back and forth with the illustrations have to be perfect, the vernacular, the words have to be perfect, setting up the vignettes with the characters, which ones go with whom, the cover of the book, the title of the book. There's so much more that goes into it. You just don't write a book (laughs) and it's published. There are many, many layers and steps, but I very much enjoyed the process. After all that time and all that hard work, Gerard, what was it like then when you got the first physical copy in your hands? It was prideful, a sense of accomplishment, and overall gratitude that I've been able to do something that I set out to do and accomplish that goal. Hmm. And looking ahead, what are your plans? More writing, more publishing, maybe making this a series? Yes, great question. I think that this is the introductory book. So obviously I would be lying if you didn't want to see how this does, but I'm interested in further topics and expanding on what we've done because it is a compilation of vignettes, things that are going on now that are really affecting children more now. Mm. And I think the more you can try to engage and educate, the better off people will be. Like you said, this was your first time publishing, so I'm sure you learned an awful lot along the way. Like you said, you were surprised how long it took. What advice would you have for authors out there who are just about to embark on that same journey? Stick with it, be patient, and know that you're accomplishing something bigger than yourself, and it's going to be rewarding in the end for you to accomplish that goal. But definitely stick with it, 
It can be a time-consuming process, but well worth it in the end. Well, certainly an important message in this book, and I encourage my listeners to check it out. It's titled The You of Chew. This is written by Gerard Roberts, M.D., and it's published by Newman Springs Publishing. You can grab this one everywhere like Amazon and Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Gerard, thanks again for joining me tonight and telling me about the U of Chew. I hope we can talk again sometime. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope the listeners and readers enjoy the book. I'm really happy to be talking with author Amy Zopp here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Amy, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. You have a new book out in stores right now titled Jake the Super Snake. Can you tell me about it? Yes. It is a children's book, an easy reader for anyone who loves snakes or wants to love snakes about a superhero snake. Wow, snakes. How'd you get the idea for it? So my son Jacob is 10 now, but a few years ago he was a very reluctant reader. And the only thing I could get him to read were books about snakes. He was obsessed about the animal. So we got all of the nonfiction that we could find, and he basically memorized any fact books he could find. But he would never read fiction because the snake was always the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And he would say, Mom, snakes are awesome. They should not be the bad guy in the book. And so one day we were on vacation visiting my parents in Florida, and I just sketched out a series of adventures for Jake the Super Snake, and he loved them. And then we decided to try to publish them. So here we are. Wonderful. Do you plan on this being a sort of a series and publish more? It is actually a series. The second one is almost finished. We're working on the cover design right now, and Jake the Super Snake is going to go to school in the next one and show off his a different superpower there. So it'll be fun. That's wonderful. Well, speaking of the cover, you know, the illustrations and everything are really important in children's books. It's just about as important as the words themselves. So what's that process like for you? So my illustrations were not for public consumption. So I was very lucky to find Christian Faith Publishing who helped hook me up with an illustrator that did the really colorful, fun illustrations that are more attractive for the public eye. <laughs> but it was really fun working through the text with them and, and coming up with designs. And my kids actually had some input too. So it was fun. Was this a long process for you, both writing it, illustrating it, and then getting it through the publishing process? So writing it, I literally did in a couple of days while I was with my family at the beach. But then the publishing and illustrating part, I would say, took about a year or so mm. before we were happy with it. And when that day came, it came in the mail, that first physical copy of it, Amy. What was that moment like for you? We were all really excited. We took a picture of my Jake with Jake the Super Snake and... <laughs> It was just really fun to see it in print, and I'm happy to have it to hand down to my kids, and they can show it to their kids someday. Amy, have you ever done anything like this before when it comes to writing a book or being published? Not really. I taught English, so I've always, you know, loved books, mm. and I write a little bit for my dad. He does sort of like daily devotionals for his company, mm. but not this scale where we're putting it out there for the world to see. So this has been the first experience like that. I'm sure you learned a lot along the way. Amy, do you have any advice that you could give to authors who are just about to embark on this journey as well? I would say just do something that is fun for you and that you enjoy and believe in and then go from there and worry about the rest sort of as it comes. Like we said, a lot of time and hard work goes into this kind of thing, Amy. So for you, what's the most rewarding aspect of now being a published author? I really love just reading the stories with my kids, honestly. Mm. I, I am a homeschooling mom, and we spend a lot of time with books in our lap and reading both fiction and nonfiction. So it's just been fun to have a book on our shelf that mommy wrote. And they know the other stories as well. So it's been really fun for them to watch it come to life. Mm. Amy, do you ever get hard up for ideas? Do you ever get writer's block or something like that? And then how do you get those ideas coming again? For Jake the Super Snake, surprisingly, it came very easily. I think because I had memorized all the fact books with my son. So I knew all of the fun things that this snake could do. But like I said, this is the first that I've ever tried to do. And I haven't tried to write anything else. So we'll see. We'll see if I do the writer's block thing or not. Hmm. 
I think a lot of children and a lot of families are going to love this book. It's titled Jake the Super Snake. It's written by Amy Zopp and is published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can grab this everywhere like Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Well, Amy, it's been great talking with you here tonight. Thanks again for joining me here on the show. Thank you very much. This book offers a lot of things that will speak to your heart. It's titled, The Bible and the Badges, Blessed are the Peacemakers. It's written by Janet Teague, and Janet is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable to chat all about it. Janet, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you here. Can you tell me all about the Bible and the badges? Absolutely. You know, I've served over 30 years in law enforcement, and I've seen more than my share of trauma, evil, death, and the like. Now I'm telling my story of being forced to confront trauma in this recently released book. And this book you can read usually within one day, giving vivid descriptions of incidents and insights into what officers go through. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend reading this life-saving book, especially if you're in law enforcement, if you're a first responder, you're a firefighter, you're an EMS, military, or anyone dealing with PTSD. But most importantly, I recommend this book to the family, the friends, or the loved ones of our heroes who are out there on the front lines each and every day. And I tell some of the most heartfelt descriptions, and I tell of an incident that surrounded in the aftermath of a shooting that I experienced back in 1994. Hmm. And I discuss this culture that keeps officers stuck. And I share in the book how I recovered to be who I am today. In this book, it's brutally honest with frontline stories to some of the most dangerous, the worst situations that others cannot comprehend. We're running to dangers. We're finding ourselves in a position to help because God is answering others' prayers through us. And in the Bible and the Badges is one of the most important books of our time to give us a necessary next step forward in understanding the healing and trauma, the trauma that has been inflicted on our warriors in these tragic and violent times that we're living in now. The stories are very graphic. The descriptions of trauma and the incidents, they'll go straight to your heart. In the book, it address topics that have been classified prior, leading to effects of layers of trauma that ensure. So we will not move forward if we deny our wounds and our scars. And this courage that was needed to write this book goes far beyond what is needed to pin on the badge. It's been long overdue for someone to step out and digging deep into the needs for tools that address PTSD injuries that officers face today. These stories that are told are horrifying, but they are encouraging at the same time. And you need to know that healing is possible if you're willing to speak up and speak out. So in this life story about how my faith in God led me into law enforcement and then later into ministry, the stories tell about many life-threatening situations that I experienced and how it made my faith even stronger and how it led me to reach out to others. Hmm. Janet, was the Bible and the Badges a book that took you a long time to write and then put through the publishing process? You know, it only took me five weeks last hmm. summer. and. When I contacted the publisher, Christian Faith Publishing, the time went by very fast with the book. That's wonderful. When you got that first physical copy in, Janet, what was that moment like for you? It was very exciting to actually see the cover that had been what I thought I wanted it to look like. Mm -hmm. But it was just amazing what the publisher did with changing it. It's a beautiful book on the outside. I'm just amazed how fast this happened and that it has become a number one bestseller week after week after week. Mm. It's exciting that it is helping to change our warriors' lives. Mm. This is such an important book. It's titled, The Bible and the Badges, Blessed are the Peacemakers. This is written by Janet Teague and is published by Christian Faith Publishing. Pick this up anywhere like Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes and down the street at your local bookshop, too. It's been truly wonderful having you on the show here today, Janet. Thank you for joining me. I hope we can talk again sometime. Yes, sir. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care. Thank you. 
I love just picking up and going on a nice long road trip from time to time. And this book really strikes a chord with me. It's Road Tripper's Guide to the United States, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Volume 1. This is written by Madison Gabrielle, and she's sitting right here with me now to talk all about it. Madison, thank you for being here with me tonight. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, it's great. You have this book out in stores now. What can you tell me about it? So it's pretty much your go-to guide for roadside attractions across the country. Volume 1 is out now. I'm hoping to get 2 and 3 done before July. I mention entrance fees, hours of operation. I give you detailed directions from the largest major cities so that you don't get lost out there. I know from adventuring myself that your phone doesn't always work. Mm. It could break. It could die. You could lose service. So the directions will really help you get there, you know, in case those things do occur. Mm. Madison, what kind of readers did you have in mind when you were writing this? Pretty much anyone that likes adventure. I love traveling, and I would love to inspire others to go out and go somewhere they never thought they'd ever go. Hmm. So how did this book come about? How did you get the idea and decide you need to write and publish it? So I really enjoyed adventuring, and kind of sad story. My friend passed away in Canada while I was living in California. Hmm. So I adventured to the Canadian border to rescue his dog. On the way, I started mapping out little cool places to see. Like in Vermont, I saw the world's tallest filing cabinet. Oh, wow. uh, I saw a Viking tower down in Newport, Rhode Island, and hmm. I started noticing there's some really cool stuff to see out there. And I thought, why not make it a guide for other people to use so that they can, you know, adventure there as well. I love it. How long did this take you to write out and then get ready for publishing? Two years of traveling. So I was living in Washington State. So I drove through all the states included. It took me about two years and then a year and a half of publication. Madison, before Road Tripper's Guide, have you ever written or published? I've written novels before, you know, not finishing them. And I don't know, I just felt like I should try to publish again, and it worked. So here I am today. And how did it feel when you finally got that first hard copy and you got to hold it in your hands for the first time? Bewilderment? I don't know. It was almost surreal that it was actually in my hands. Mm -hmm. When I first sent off the manuscript, I went to the printing place in Washington, paid $19 to print it out just in paper. And holding it then, you know, was crazy, but actually seeing it, the finished product was just short of amazing, I have to say. That's great. A lot of people listening right now are authors who are just starting out. They want to publish their first work, too. So, Madison, what words of wisdom do you have now that you could offer them? Just do it. You've put so much effort and so much work and time into whatever you're writing. I feel like it would be a shame not to share it with other people. Don't procrastinate. Just send it in. You never know what could happen. Madison, it sounds like you're finding so many cool, undiscovered places out there that it would be hard to run out of ideas for things. But do you ever run into writer's block or where you just can't figure out what words to put down? Definitely. The first volume was pretty easy. Washington and Oregon have a lot of places, but then you get to places, you know, North Dakota. There's not much going there. So sometimes I got stuck and had to realize I had to, you know, dig a little deeper to find places so that I didn't have just one or two pages of North Dakota. And I think I ended up with 15 pages with three, you know, locations a page. Wow. Like you said, a lot of time and hard work goes into writing and publishing a book. So, Madison, what's the most rewarding aspect for you now of being a published author? Inspiring others. You know, if I can get people to get out of your house and go somewhere and experience the places that I've experienced, you know, I've met so many people and seen so many cool things. And I think that's what's most important is getting other people out there so that they can enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. What are the chances you might venture out into fiction again and publish some fiction in the future? Absolutely. I have a few stories and it's just putting it down on paper. You know, this book was a little easier than coming up with a, you know, a whole storyline, but I definitely would love to finish one of those and get them out there. I know a lot of people are going to love this book and ought to check it out. The title is Road Tripper's Guide to the United States, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Volume 1. This is written by Madison Gabrielle and it's published by Fulton Books. You can grab this one up everywhere, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Google Play, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Madison, thank you again for coming on the show and telling me about your book. I had a great time talking tonight. You as well. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this edition of the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. We hope to see you back here every Friday night at 8 p.m. 
or listen anytime via podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, to name just a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first.